Alright, we are moving forwards with the project. Up until now, I've shown you a lot of the mechanical side of things, so in this video, we will take a look at the electronics and control unit of the mill. Like you guys just saw, the X and the Y axis are functional and equipped with limit switches. I spent an eternity trying to figure out where I could mount the limit switches so they are rigid and easy to access. Y axis was easier as these switches could be directly bolted to the frame tubes. X axis however required some specialized mounts to create space for the sleds. Final solution was an L shaped bracket that was bolted to the edge of the rail mount. By the way, the switches used here are called ME8112. These are mechanical limit switches and they make a very satisfying click when triggered. All the switches are wired normally closed, so in the event of cable breaking or becoming loose, the switch will act as if it was pressed. Using normally closed switches instead of open ones is always a good practice when it comes to limit switches. The two limit switches on each axis are wired in series, so breaking contact on either one results in an emergency stop. Let's take a look at the drive system next. Each of the three axes gets an identical set consisting of a closed loop stepper with a dedicated stepper driver. These motors and drivers are designed to work as a pair. The signals from the controller to the driver are just simple step, direction and enable signals. The driver then rotates the motor and inspects the movement through an encoder signal. If the motor is skipping steps, the driver will compensate for lost steps to ensure that the end position is correct. This is helpful as steppers can skip steps if the load put on them gets too high. Next, let's look at the electrical enclosure. This huge metal box houses the power supplies, motor drivers and VFD, as well as the brains of the machine, the Pokies 57 CNC controller. Let's first dive into the power supplies. As you see, there are three on board. This 36 volt, 600 watt power supply is dedicated for the motor drivers. The power from the supply to the drivers is fed through a normally open contactor. This contactor is part of the safety circuit. More on that in just a second. Next to the driver supply are 24 volt and 12 volt power supplies that are used for powering the controller as well as powering a bunch of different equipment. These include cooling fans for the enclosure as well as the water cooling system for the spindle. I've also added some extra connections and switches for future as I will likely add stuff like lights inside the enclosure. These power supplies also supply power for the e-stop circuit. This circuit has two functions. It informs the Pokies controller that e-stop is pressed and it shuts the contactor supplying power to the motors. Hitting the e-stop will result in an immediate feed stop as well as spindle deceleration. Alright, let's move on. Next to the power supplies lies the VFD. This variable frequency drive is used to control the spindle motor. This VFD is rated for maximum power of 1.5 kW, which is plenty for my 800 watt spindle. By controlling the frequency, you can control the speed of the spindle. Maximum frequency, which in my case is 400 Hz, results in the maximum spindle RPM of 20,000. The VFD frequency can be set from the Pokies controller using analog signal. A signal between 0 and 10 volts represents the range from 0 to 400 Hz. There are also digital inputs on the VFD that are used to run the spindle either clockwise or counterclockwise. Just a heads up here, if you are buying a Chinese VFD, check the manual you get with it. Mine was a manual of an older product that had different programming parameters in it. This caused some headache on the way. Last but not least, the controller itself. As mentioned, it is a Pokies 57 CNC. Currently connected to the controller are power input, outputs for the spindle control, outputs for the motor drivers and inputs of the limit switches, as well as the ethernet cable from the PC. This controller has dedicated pins for things such as motors and limit switches, which makes setting it up easy. Ish. You might still want to look up a manual of the controller and if you are using Mark IV, there is a dedicated guide that makes the whole process that much easier. I will link this in the description. A brief explanation of what I've done is setting up the Pokies plugin and then configuring the controller through Mach 4. First, configure your motors on the Pulse Engine tab. Mine require the enable and step signals to be inverted. 
Here you can also see that my limit plus switch on both motor 0 and motor 1 are set to external dedicated. This corresponds to the screw terminal on the Pokis controller. Homing switches are shared with limit switches and homing routine includes slowly backing up after a switch has been triggered and resetting the machine coordinates once the switch is no longer engaged. While still in Pokis configuration, head to miscellaneous tab. Here you want to enable the PWM outputs and set the PWM frequency to 20,000. Enable pin 17 and set it as spindle output. Also check set to zero when off option underneath pin selection. All done, let's head up to the control menu next. On the defaults page, set your machine units and control mode. Next, head to the motors tab and enable your motors. Click on each of the motors and set the parameters according to your machine. Mine are set up to 1600 microsteps of revolution and the ball screws have a 5mm pitch. This results in the machine having to take 320 steps to move the table 1mm. I also had to reverse both my axes as my default step direction on the motor controller was incorrect. Under the axis mapping tab, you finally assign these motors to different axes. My motor 0 moves the x-axis and motor 1 moves the y-axis. Motor 2 will move the z-axis in the future and will be configured once z-axis is completed. Homing and soft limits are also configured in control menu. My homing direction for both axes is negative and in future I will change the homing order to 2, 3, 1 as I would like the z-axis to move up and out of the way before moving the xy table. By activating the soft enable option, you can set up soft limits to your machine. These soft limits represent the machine coordinates and they can be properly utilized after homing the machine. The input signals for the limit switches should be set automatically after configuring your pulse engine on the POCUS configure menu. If they aren't, you can configure them on the input signal tab. Next, the output signal tab. The output signals for your motors should also be set automatically but you will need to enable the spindle forward and spindle reverse outputs. Setting these to external open collector outputs 1 and 2 allows you to start the spindle on either direction. These are the pins that need to be connected to your VFD's digital inputs. Finally, under the spindle tab, set your minimum and maximum RPM. I also set up the acceleration and deceleration times to match my settings on the VFD, but this doesn't really matter since the parameters are controlled by the VFD itself. That is pretty much all I've done with the controls up until this point. The Z-axis assembly is still under construction as I opted to redo the ball screw mounts. Other than that, the machine is starting to really come to life. When the Z-axis is completed, the machine will be assembled on the carriage and first actual tests can begin, so stay tuned for that. But now, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one. Cheers!